Today I checked for equality with just redstone. So you want to check if two strings of data are equaled with just redstone. I mean, <laughs> literally no one wants to know that, but I'm gonna tell you about it anyway. It works with XOR gates using this circuit over there. All right, thanks for watching. <laughs> no, no. What does it mean to have two strings of data? What does it mean to have them equal to each other? And what the hell is the XOR gate? Well, that's what we'll see right now. First, how do we represent data? For starters, we represent data in Minecraft using binary or ones and zeros. Redstone off representing a zero and redstone on representing a one. And that's called a bit. For example, here we have four redstone dusts and they go on, off, on, off. Then it represents one because it's on, zero because it's off, one again because it's on again, and zero again because it's off again. One, zero, one, zero. However, only looking at redstone dust is very impractical, so instead we use redstone lamp so that it's more visual. You can see that it's the exact same combination but with redstone lamps instead. One, zero, one, zero. Now, where do I want to go with this? Well, at the start, we wanted to know what a binary string of data was. Well, <laughs> you're looking at it right there. A binary string of data is, well, only a list of binary bits. This string over there is a 4-bit binary string of data. 4 bits because there are 4 ones and zeros in that string, binary because it uses bits, and string because it's a list. Just so I say it at least once, a string of data can represent virtually anything, from numbers to locations and IPs, text, your height, my height, the roundness of donuts, your mom's phone number, <laughs> and the list goes on. Now that we know what binary strings of data are, what does it mean for binary strings to be equal? That's actually really simple. Here are two binary strings of data, and they are equal if all their bits are the same. Here we have 1010 and 1011. Are they equal? You can surely tell that they aren't equal because the last bit is actually different. This one is a 0 and this one is a 1. But how would a computer think about it? Well, a computer goes through each bit of both strings one by one, and if there is at least one pair of bits that are different, like this one, 0 and 1 instead of 1, 1 or 0, 0, then both strings aren't equal. Let's go through this example here real quick. We have 1 and 1, these are the same, so we move on. 0 and 0, these are the same as well, so we move on. 1 and 1, these are the same, we move on. 0 and 1, these two aren't the same, so both strings aren't equal. However, if we execute the same process on 0101 and 0101, by checking each bit pair, we can see that they are equal because each bit pair is not different. Now that we know what it means for two binary strings to be equal, we need to make a circuit that checks that for us. And for that, we first use logic gates. You may have heard of them before, it's a simple idea really. All they do is do an operation on input bits and output the result. The same way one operation add one equals to two in our world, in the logic gate world, one, some logic gate operation one may equal zero or one, because yes, logic gates output bits instead of real numbers here. A logic gate is only an operation on bits that outputs a bit. That's literally it, that's little it, that's it. For example, here we have an AND logic gate, or AND gate for short, that outputs one when the first input bit and the second input bits are one. Though it's a bit of a mouthful to explain it that way. So for logic gates, we use what we call truth tables, where for each combination of input bits, we write down what the gate would output for that combination. And here is the AND gate truth table. We can see that as soon as both inputted bits are one, it outputs a one, otherwise it outputs a zero. And there is a bunch of these logic gates. For example, we have the NOT gate over there, which takes in a bit and then inverts it, so 1 becomes zeros and zeros becomes 1s. You have the OR gate, which as soon as there is a 1 in its input, outputs a 1. So as you can see, we have two zeros there, so it outputs 0. But as soon as we have a 1 here, here, and there, it outputs a 1. And then finally, I mean, not finally, there's like tons of other more, but basically you have, for example, the NOR gate, which is the same as an OR gate, but knotted with a knot. So ones becomes zeros, as you can see, one, 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 zero, 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 and zeros becomes one. It's the same, but inverted. Which logic gate is going to interest us today is the XOR gate, because it's going to output 0 if both inputs are the same, and 1 if they are different.
For example, here we have 1 and 1, which are the same, so the XOR gate is going to output a 0. However, if they are different, like here with 1, 0 and 0 and 1, it's going to output 1. So now we have a gate that is able to tell if two bits are the same, but how are we going to apply it to a binary string with more than one bit? Imagine we want to check if 0110 and 0110 are both equal. What we're going to do is take the first bit of both strings, XOR them together, then write down the result down there in the XOR output string. And so here we have 0 and 0, we XOR them together and we get 0 as well. Then we take the second bit of both strings, XOR them together, then write down the result again. 1 and 1 XOR is 0 as well. Let's do that for each bit and congrats you just XORed two binary strings together to get one binary string as a result. By XORing two binary strings together, we're gonna see that the result we wrote down has a very cool property. Which is that when two binary strings are equal, the result is always, and I mean always, a bunch of zeros. However, as soon as one bit pair is different from the other, we're gonna have at least a 1 somewhere in our output. For example, let me flip this bit right there, and now we can see that we have 0 and 1. 0 and 1 XORed together is a 1, so we write it down, and you can see that we now have a 1 in our output string. And that is super useful for our problem, because now we can see that to check for equality, we only need to XOR both strings together, then just detect if it's all zeros. And would you know it, it's all possible with redstone. Let's get building! Before we build anything though, I want to say that our build is going to be a circuit that takes in two binary strings and outputs a single bit, which is going to be set to 1 or true if both binary strings are equal, and 0 or false if they aren't. I think it's important to specify what we want before building anything, so that we basically know where we're going. Alright, let's go. Firstly, we're gonna build our inputs. At the top, we have our input binary string number one, and at the bottom, we have our input binary string number two. Next, what we want is to XOR each bit pair of our binary strings one by one. So here's a XOR gate that XORs both bits together and outputs the result at the back here, where this redstone lamp is representing the output bit. Now we can see that when both bits are the same, the XOR gate outputs a zero. However, as soon as they are different, like 1 and 0, then the XOR gate outputs a 1. I actually found this design over on I Love Indigo's channel on a video from literally 10 years ago. So there are videos linked in the desk. Well, right now, we are XORing the first bits of both strings together, but we need to do that for each bit pair, so let's tack it three more times. And that's what it looks like, it's just four XOR gates. Now, if we take our previous example with 0110 and 0110, we can see at the back that our output is all zeros. However, if I flip this bit around, we can see that both strings are not equal anymore and we get a 1 at the back. And by the way, if I flip more bits around, you can see that there is more 1s appearing in the output. The next step is to input the XOR outputs into a 4-bit OR gate in green here. Remember when I talked about OR gates earlier? The whole idea of an OR gate is to output 1 when there is at least one inputted bit that is a 1. And that's how it's built, it's only a redstone line like so, and as you can see, if any of the bits is a 1, the entire redstone line lights up, lighting up this redstone lamp over there, telling us that there is at least a 1 in the XOR string output. Alright, let's test it real quick to make sure that it works. I'm going to input 11000011, and as you can see, both of these strings are not equal. So there has to be at least one in the outputs of the XOR gates, which is what this lamp tells us because it's lit it up. And as you guys can see, we have at least a 1. Well, in this case, <laughs> the entire string output is actually full of 1s. Now, what's amazing about this is that we kind of already have our equality circuit done. As you can see, when both strings are equal, so let's set it to 0011, our output is 0. However, as soon as they are not equal anymore, our output is 1. However, we want the exact inverse of that, a 1 if both strings are equal and 0 otherwise. So all we have left to do is to build a NOT gate at the end of the OR gate to inverse the output. And that's what this light blue circuit over there is doing. It is a NOT gate with a torch that takes in a bit and outputs the inverse of that bit. It outputs 0 if it gets a 1 in, and if it gets a 0 in like right now, the redstone dust is off, then it outputs a 1. 
Now, our circuit, instead of outputting 0 when both strings are equal, it returns a 1, which is, as I already said, what we need and what we want. And now let's prove to ourselves that it actually works. So let's do, for example, uh, I don't know, like 0111 on both. So 0, oops, <laughs> 0111 and 0111. And you can see that our circuit is telling us that they are equal. However, let's do 0111, 0101, like so. And our circuit is telling us, no, they aren't equal. Nice. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. So I wanted to show you. <laughs> See ya.